Apes win war! Apes together, strong! Caesar, weak. Cobra, weaker. Welcome back to another episode of The Harbor. I'm your boy, the Kino Cowboy. I'm here with Scott and Casher, like usual. We're on our <laughs> third Planet of the Apes cast. This time, we're talking about the reboot sequel, prequel, whatever you want to call them, um, from 2011, 2014, 2017. Um, so, yeah. I saw the first one in theaters, and then the other two I didn't watch until a few years later. Um, but I will say I did have that audience moment, which we'll get to this, but I just want to say I, I, the most, one of the most memorable, uh, audience moments was when Caesar says no in the first movie, my entire oh, yeah. audience gasped because, oh, yeah. um, yeah. So what about you guys? <laughs> I watched all three in theaters. These are like thumbs. I fucking love these movies. Um, I've only seen War once, so this was my first time having to revisit it. The other two I've watched a bunch because they've just always been on streaming, and I'm like, oh, I'm bored. I can throw these on. Uh, it's kind of like how many times I've watched Return of the King compared to Two Towers and huh. Fellowship of the Ring. Interesting. I saw, I think the first time I saw Rise was at your mom's house, Casher. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you made us beer brats. Oh, fuck. I forgot about oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Zach Bass walked into someone else's house accidentally. And then he showed up. <laughs> and he was like, wait, no, this is not his house. Um, That's funny. I hope he sat there eating their food before he realized. <laughs> yeah. Beer brats. Um, So I didn't have a theater moment. I do remember showing my parents. I was watching Rise on TV. It was on cable or whatever. One of the movie channels. And my parents were there and they're like, oh, well, we're, we're going to go to bed. I was like, hold on, hold on. Watch like five more minutes because I knew it was about to get to the no scene. And I remember my dad, who has seen all the old ones, um, his jaw dropped. And my mom said she woke up in the middle of the night thinking about Caesar saying no, um, <laughs> which is which is something watching these movies. By the way, Dawn and War, I watched uh, today um for the first time both of wow. them yeah i I'd, I'd been putting those off forever i don't know why i saw the mark Wahlberg planet of the apes before oh, i saw this man that's what i was hoping we do our fucking planet of the apes cast we already what talked we about that one right? and, and at least one of the past episodes <laughs> that isn't <laughs> stupid but it's uh, am- it's amazing to me how big these movies are for how I know. Rid- ridiculous the concept is in that they're all, you know, not the biggest blockbusters, but big enough to have a nine movie franchise spawning spanning decades. Um, which I don't I, I guess nothing unites people like apes and monkeys and lichen monkeys. Um but at the end of the day, you give me a movie where an ape has an assault rifle, I'm going to I'm be in. There. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> they put, they put that motherfucker on a horse. Yeah, we're into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is what I thought too, rewatching it, how beautiful it is that such an insane and kind of stupid concept can be like taken so seriously. And it's done oh. so well. And it's like, incredibly serious. Like, Circus takes this role and does not phone it in. He is so fucking serious playing a chimpanzee. Uh, it's probably my, like one of the, my favorite things just about the movie itself is that Caesar is full, he is full on into that fucking role. Right, it's his, it's Caesar's movies more than anything. And yeah. you have something like Gollum where you know he's essential to the plot, but it's not his movie at the end of the day. Right. Um, whereas all three of these movies are really Caesar's. They kind and each one I notice gets more and more ape focused. The first one, you know, it, it's a lot of James Franco doing James Franco stuff with some ape thrown in. And the second one's about 50 50. 
And the third one, we're pretty much following Caesar and his crew the whole time. It's almost entirely ape focused. Yeah. Um, which ape together strong. Eight together strong. We've been memeing all that all week in our group chat. Um, they, don't need to know, they don't get to know that. That's too private. I don't want them <laughs> no. to know. <laughs> okay, okay. Never. They, they can know that. They, they can't know that we have a group chat to talk about schedule. Yeah, where we're talking about instead of ape together strong, we say ape together come. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, That's where I said that before wanna. the podcast. <laughs> um, but uh, my parents are proud. Um, well, it, it's it's one of these things I was thinking about. These movies are more grounded than previous iterations of the series. Because I guess 2011, we're kind of coming out of it, I think, at this point. But the 2000s, you saw a lot of gritty reboots. Uh, You could argue that the Mark Wahlberg Planet of the Apes was kind of that. It was darker and Tim Burton-y. But, you know, you have your, like, Casino Royale, Batman Begins and stuff. Um, and, And I feel like there's this idea that audiences... I don't know if executives still think this but that audiences need some sort of scientific explanation as to why things are the way they are in movies for example in the original thor in the first thor movie they had to explain like it's not magic it's science and then now now the mcu is just like it's magic fuck it who cares um and i feel like they kind and, and they still keep that through line throughout all of these in the 2010s and they definitely have the more scientific quote unquote explanation in the first one but by the end of these i'm glad they've progressed and that the audience has progressed along with the concept and i guess that the matt reeves in his movies respects the audience enough to just be like yeah you know they're talking monkeys and just you know we'll just focus more and more on that and we kind of have some you know psycho babble not psycho babble but you know what i mean sure some jargon but at the end of the day it's apes with guns what more do you want right I, then, uh, go what's ahead. up huh oh, i was gonna say I, I do think though that the this specifically is one of the more interesting like giving out of information like so it's like a lot of reboots didn't really have a point when it came to trying to reveal what happened in the past but that I mean, you know, this was actually like genuinely interesting because there's so many things that happen when Heston's character hits that planet for the first time with like the enslavement of fucking humans and like humans being feral, and then the caste system of uh, of uh, monkeys, and then they bring up like there's lore that's within the, the 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 apes, and so for them to go in and they just had so much that they could like reveal, and I'm glad they kind of kept it simple with like oh. It's just, it's a virus. Like a, it's a virus. It's a it's a it's a it makes you smart, um, or makes apes smart. Um, and I'm glad they kept like the simplicity of that. Yeah, makes apes smart, makes humans dumb. There's um yeah, I have a few issues with the first film that I would like to get into, but sure. overall, you know, I do like it. But it's fine. I'm I'm glad um, the. They because they could have easily t- 10 years later done a complete reboot where it's uh just a remake a rehash of the first one or do a slight prequel to the first one or something. But this is like, OK, no, this is set in our day, uh, which is cool. Um, I don't know, because sometimes you don't really have to see how things come about um in a prequel. But if it's done interestingly, then fuck it. It's cool with me, you know. And I do think this first one falls into more standard blockbuster trappings than the other two. And there's a lot of simplistic writing and storytelling, but it's still pretty good. And it it escapes a lot of those trappings for the most part. I just don't think like, like, I think you can trust audiences more than they realized with this first one. Like you don't have to explain bit by bit. Okay. Well, this is how that happened. And, you know, the virus is fine. Uh, it's just a silly kind of thing to me. Yeah. What I find more interesting is seeing the actual rise of Caesar and his tribe. Sure. After this, like, this movie's fine to set up what turns into two of, like, the two of, like, the better blockbuster uh, sequels that have come out in a long time. Um, and seeing, like, the political tension and then, like, the the warring tension between not only caesar and the humans but caesar and coba inside his tribe and things like that uh it's fun to see the legendary caesar 
the sure. legend. And it does, I guess it's um I am I don't mind the stupid schlock of the fourth one where it's like, okay, it's been eight years, but all the pets died. And uh, that's how, and like the apes have somehow evolved. It doesn't, that doesn't really matter to me. I just buy it because it's a fun, silly, stupid thing. Um, So, you know, I get why they would want to have a reboot that explains how this happened. I just don't think they need to have certain callbacks. Like, I also don't think they keep showing like the astronauts are going to Mars just off on the TV and stuff. I don't think they needed to show that. I don't find, I think it's like, well, they're going right as this is happening. Okay. But like now it's a complete reboot. Like I felt like it could have stood as like a prequel if they didn't have the astronauts leaving then instead of in the seventies. I don't know. It could have like tied in to the first one, you know, I think, I think it's better if it doesn't tie in though, because then they can just do their own thing. Cause we the whole, the whole part point of this is we're seeing the arc of Caesar, but we've already seen that done before. Like you said, the fourth movie, so, I mean, are they just going to recapitulate the fourth movie? No, I'm just saying, like, we, we as the audience, if you like Planet of the Apes, you know that in the 70s, Taylor's crew went up and disappeared. And then that's it. I don't know. I just, and then a few other things, like, I like Caesar's big no moment, but I don't like that Draco Malfoy says, take your stinking paws on me, off me, you damn dirty ape. Because it's such a 60s line that sticks out like a sore thumb. It does stick out like a sore thumb. And that's the problem I have with a lot of references and Easter eggs in movies uh, that are normally not well-hidden Easter eggs. It's like the Easter egg hunts they do at churches for four-year-olds where they just put them in the grass. Yeah, and They don't even hide them. They're just like, here, you're a stupid four-year-old. Go pick you up wanna, some plastic eggs. You want to know who loved that line? Line, though fucking 16 17 year old me dude yeah I'm super into that no, I, I get that yeah i got um i get that and Re- re-watching it is cheesy as fuck it is cheesy, and some of the callbacks are unnecessary um for for example um why do they name the little girl nova in war because yeah. Nova's supposed to be like a sexy cave woman male fantasy She's sexy but can't talk, which is every male's fantasy, I guess, in the 60s. Yeah. Um, well, it's because they found a car part, Scott. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, uh, point. that said Nova on it. Uh, I do yeah, want to say lame. that in, <laughs> we got the damn dirty apes, but uh I if I remember correctly, in the Tim Burton one, uh Mark Wahlberg grabs the gorilla and he goes, damn dirty human. Yeah, yeah. M- Michael Clark Duncan. Way- that's a way better fucking oh, okay. tease. I don't I'm think just saying so. Tim Burton one's underrated, dude. I don't think so. I'll die on that hill. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> it's neat to look at chaotic. some parts. The production and costuming are good. Other yeah. than that, it's whatever. <laughs> so yeah, let, let's focus on Rise first, which I will say, I think the names should be switched. I think the first one should be called Dawn and then the second one should be Rise or I don't know. They feel like they seem they I get those confused cuz they kind of mean the same thing. I do. Yeah. That that's that's true. Um hell, you could even say Dawn has more of a war than Yeah. War. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all, it's kind of a weird naming. Yeah. And it's kind of misleading to name the third one War when it's like a prison break at the end, you know. So, I don't know. Right. Well, that's just what they call it. Um I, I like know. that though. I like that it's not just a dumb big dumb action movie that yes i do it's the greatest when well, we'll get there but it's the great escape but with apes the yeah. ape escape it's ape escape <laughs> <Whoa. Where> it, <laughs> um games i never play as a kid the things i do like about the first one one it's an hour and 45 minutes it gets to the point doesn't fucking linger two if we're gonna you know you gotta have the human connection i do like james franco is trying to stop alzheimer's i think that's a great and easy way to give his character drive and have the connection to his dad because it's realistic and it does suck because several times in my life we've had to tell we had to tell my grandpa like he would look for his car keys just like in this movie so it really hits close I'm like we we don't you don't have car keys anymore dog it sucks. So the yeah. drive is there it's a strong way to start off like okay but it gets really like kind of like blockbuster scripty, like there's a virus and we're doing this sciencey stuff to try and I don't know. It just seems kind of silly. The, the the fact that the uh the the virus gives you like super apes is very like deep blue sea esque, where it's like 
we developed a virus that makes sharks a hundred times smarter. Uh, and it's just kind of dumb. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I'm I'm here for I, it. I, I can hand wave it. It's a plot contrivance. Yeah. I, uh, it, I it makes it makes more, more sense of the apes just evolved within yeah. one generation. Uh, I, uh also in conquest. Do not like James Franco in this movie. You don't like him in this movie, or you don't like no, him, period. I don't like him in this movie. I think why do you fine. not like him in this movie? I think it just yeah, kind of hams it up. I don't mind him. I think he's fine. Like, I uh, and then it kind of cracks me up that we never see him again, besides in like well, he, pictures later. He on. died to the flu. Well, that's what I'm saying, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you, do like, you think it's he was a creep on set? I Ooh. think it's because he was a creep on set that he was yeah, because yeah. he's he's gotten kind of me too. Not like heavy oh. me, not Weinstein me too, but you know he's, he's not gone to jail, but he does not have a career. Yeah, he's he's been too busy trying to fuck his grad students. Yeah. <laughs> do you think, he was, do you think okay. he was like feeling up Andy Circus in the mo? This was in 2011, movie? though. He was fresh off of Spider Man and and doing shit with James uh, with uh, Seth Rogen. So I don't. Yeah, think it was. He's that. trying to I, escape uh, Fly Boys at this time because uh, yeah he was doing the interview in 2014 he was fine i don't think it was that at all i just think they went in a different direction in it no I, I really think they went in a different direction it's it, it makes sense too and it's a good like it, it serves a good purpose in the second one so and, no because uh, the, the whole point is that caesar is the only one who has any empathy for the humans unlike coba which Koba is the Magneto to Caesar's Xavier, I will say. <laughs> Koba's fucking terrifying, too. Like, genuinely, he's really badass in the first movie, though. Yeah. Uh, but, like, once he turns against Caesar, it's like nightmare fuel. The fucking dead eye and, like... The showing scars. all his, his scars. He's like, human yeah, work. Human work. Like, showing his teeth off all the fucking time, dude. Yeah. I, so, I will say, I fucking hate chimps. Like... If I do not like chimpanzees, they're violent, they're disgusting, they're fuck, fucked up. I don't yeah, mind the other great apes, dude, but I do not like chimps. Um, so it's always rubbed me the wrong way that chimps are the highest in the cast, or what are higher in the cast than gorillas are in fucking Planet of the Apes. Right, because they, they, they portray gorillas as warlike, but gorillas are actually very peaceful. Yeah, they're gentle chimps. and cool. Yeah. Chimps will fucking rip your dick off and then put it down your throat and then rip it out from your stomach. Yeah, that's badass. That's why when you see them swinging their arms down on humans, you like wince because you can imagine. Yes, it. You you read this? Uh, I wrote about this one chimp who this zookeeper. It was one chimp's birthday, so he got that chimp a cake. And of course, chimps don't know what a birthday is. So another chimp was jealous because he didn't get cake. So he ripped the guy's nose off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the guy still that's doesn't fucked up, nose. dude. Yeah. So yeah. man, I imagine if these had like an R rating and kind of violence you would see. If, if we got fun. to see Caesar rip people's dicks off. Well, you know, maybe limbs or something. No, I don't know. No, I want to see Caesar rip people's dicks off. Like That's the thing. They don't go for limbs, dude. Chimps will go for like the most like sensitive. That's because it's PG thirteen. Well, I'm just saying yeah. chimps it, in real life go for fucking sensitive points. Fuck yeah, dude, they'll bring up shit from your childhood. There's talk too about many your relationship in this fucking your movie, dude. I don't like chimps. Fuck okay, chimps. well, fuck you. <laughs> you're, you're, I do like... Cancer's just jealous because he's a gorilla. <laughs> There's, um... I do like that, that, yeah, they get straight to the point. There's, like, a time skip and then another time skip. And then we see Caesar. He's more advanced now, and he's on, like, a leash... And he's wearing clothes, and and that's a good like reminiscent callback to the fourth film in the original series. Um, so I did like that, and um, I like that he's feels weird about being on a leash, etc. And uh, yeah, because it and the film does convey how scary the first one does convey how scary it would be to be chased and attacked by a chimp. Because that neighbor, like, it crosses him. Like, that neighbor just gets shit on the, the whole movie. And, like, um, his car gets destroyed. And, they, like... Yeah, they, they kind of try to portray the neighbor as an asshole. But, I, honestly, he's very reasonable throughout that whole movie. He's like, yeah. why is this, what is this old man doing stealing my car? Why Why do my neighbors have a chimp that keeps breaking out? Like, he's, he's just having a bad time. <laughs> he's not... Yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't but know. Maybe much see, like... Maybe... Maybe secretly he's like a neo-Nazi or something. That's how they get it. Or they're in San Francisco. Maybe he's a tech bro and we get to see him take over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The movie's very like, the stronger virus make monkey smarter, you know? And um, the boss is like, 
he he likes money more than you know safety it's all very simple generic stuff oh yeah, yeah the bo- the boss is very much saying like we make money this will make us more money than all of our other drugs combined um but i don't i don't blame the producers for wanting to play it safe i know, know i know because the last planet of the apes movie i don't know how well it did financially um i don't think it did great but it probably made some money it did all right Plus yeah. what? How long ago did that come out compared to this? 2001 and 2011. Yeah. Okay. So, so eat, you know, it was a it. different era uh, in blockbuster filmmaking. And uh, it was. I do say, dude, you know, there's some badass imagery in the first one, though. Sure, yeah. Uh, like when they're storming the fucking San Francisco Bridge. Yeah. Uh, I thought that's... you were about to say Capitol. No, um, there, dude. There are some cold ass shots in this. Yeah. Oh no, the, them on the bridge. That when entire- the when Mister Jacobs, he, the the boss, he walks into the laboratory cafeteria or whatever, and all you can just see the apes all like silently standing above them and stuff. It's so awesome. Fucking Logan Roy. It's the same thing when the uh, the animal control guy like try and he like gets a spear thrown at him and he looks up and they're all in the building and stuff. It, it's so cold. It's so it, awesome. Dude. Or when they go into the fucking redwoods, yeah, like they're all like frantically trying to get further and further in. Like that shit, it just looks really cool. Like any, as much as I hate chimps, those are cool. Like those are cool moments. <laughs> no, you're it's... watching a Planet of the Apes movie. <laughs> you got to get over this fucking. Yeah, but they don't look like <laughs> chimps in the OG Planet of the Apes. They look like fuckable chimps. Okay, <laughs> you make me fucking. Is that, is that why you like out. the? Uh... The romance between Marky Mark and Helena Bonham Carter. Oh, dude. Why? W- why would you not? Like that? <laughs> Jesus, that interspecies. Look, if they can talk, it's technically not bestiality, guys. Yeah, That's dude, they can around. consent. <laughs> well, what I'm talking about with the the script <laughs> problems is like, it's like there's this time skip. It's been like eight years. And it, it it's like he's still with that girlfriend, and like it took him. It's. I think it's weird that it took him eight years to show her what he's been working on with Caesar. I think that's like a six months later kind of conversation, not a eight years kind of thing. And then also, I think it's weird that it took eight years for his dad's body to build up antibodies against the virus. Uh, you know, these are just nitpicks. I just, uh, I noticed it this time, like, it's kind of a stretch to me. But. Yeah, I thought about that. Um, there needed to be a scene with the girlfriend being like, "When are you gonna propose, James?" Um, yeah. Doing that. Uh, yeah. yeah. When, when are you talking about? You're engaged. Um, Man, I don't care in this movie if if James Franco's engaged or not. Yeah, with that Engaged. character whose name I can't remember because she's just the girlfriend. That's exactly. No, no, no fault to the actress, but you know that's the character. Name she's the actress a- then. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> The actress's name? I don't know. I I just looked it up and I still don't remember. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, Frida Pinto. I don't recognize her anyway. No, she's. The, uh... But these are just little nitpicks. I do like overall the film, and uh, it's a fun time, especially. Uh, of course, once he gets to the uh, sanctuary for the monkeys, apes, or whatever. Yeah, because then we get more monkey action. And none yeah, of this exactly. James Franco. Yeah, right. More monkey action. Fuck James Franco. Fuck John Lithgow and his demented brain. Uh, I like John Lithgow. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do like that. I, it, it does add some heart to it. And you, yeah. you, you, when you see go, you get to see Caesar want to protect him when he sees him getting quote unquote abused outside, even though, I don't know. But um, <laughs> I like... um. I like that this movie leads into Dawn and War. I like that without <laughs> this movie, we would not have Dawn or War, because I love Dawn and War. I like that he uh, finds a system to get all the apes to trust him with cookies and stuff. And I like uh, that we really get moments where they're interacting without any... Because uh, of the later ones, movies, it's a ton of subtitles and stuff. But really, it's just... Uh, just kind of watching in uh, his actions to see how it progresses and how he gets them to listen to him and stuff like that. That's all interesting. There's actual, cause there's not a reliance on dialogue, even in the later movies where there's more subtitles. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like a lot of those scenes, the visual stories telling is so strong that you could pretty much interpret most of the conversations more or less just from the situation and what they're talking about and what happens next. Um, 
Yeah. Which uh the the uh the special effects fucking hold up. Oh, it's better than most special I'll effects. I'll say yeah. no, dude, watching war, I it's kind of scary how good the CGI yeah, is. Yeah, it's man. insane, and I don't understand why there's not more films that could that can do because they that. take three years to make and they don't rush them out. Yeah. And and I mean some of those close ups are photorealistic. I know like, it's scary. When when Nova wakes up and, and, and Maurice, is, Maurice right there. is looking at her, that looks almost photorealistic. Also, uh, imagine you're a child and you wake up and there's chimps with guns at your bed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, like, you would you would expect a chimp with a gun, but a Maurice though comes in and you know I like orangutans a lot. Yeah, orangutans are cool. Um, this whole movie, I was, I was kind of fantasizing if if I met a zoo. T- uh, keeper chick just so i could become friends with the orangutans not so i could actually date her <laughs> like just for the in in the, in my fantasy she's like are you just using me to get these monkeys and i'm like you're damn right also they're apes you don't know your job um this movie but- also rise also does that thing that i hate that's really annoying where it has like the group of like vapid troublemaking young folks walk around with a six pack of beer just being fucking dickheads it's like first of all how old are these people they're acting like teenagers but they're growing why are they walking around in the middle of the day at a ape sanctuary with a six pack of beer as if they're like in a forest like in a slasher or something i don't know it's just like oh we're gonna have this six pack of beer to show that they're kind of wild kind of crazy yeah, but the, these people are all of age and could just go to a bar or the liquor store. Yeah, exactly. It's not like they're having to sneak it out on the football field at midnight. They could all be on meth. Yeah, well, that's possible. They are in San Francisco. It's just kind of like... There's a lot of drugs. Probably Eric writing that just bugs me. I don't know. I've noticed that way more in this first one. It, it is in right. very much... Um, I'm trying to use his real name. Malfoy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, Tom, Tom Felton. Tom Sorry, Felton. Buddy. Shout yes. out Tom Felton. We like. Yeah, him. we know he listens. Um, yeah, it's our number one fan. But yeah, Tom Felton, and he's good at playing a bastard. On obviously, which is why yeah. he was cast. No, I mean, really, like he's good. Yeah. At it. But, I'll tell my father about this. Yeah, that's yeah. what it feels. But at the same time, he his only that character has no arc. His arc is being an asshole and then getting beat down. Like that's that's the whole art and then oh. not every character has to have an art but there should be like a hint of like why he's such a fucking prick for no no reason. he just is but he's yeah. what i'm saying is he's a plot device he's yeah. he's certain characters are just plot devices i argue like his girlfriend and a lot of girlfriends in movies by the way not to get all woke on the podcast. a lot of girlfriends in real life yeah okay. <laughs> are okay. just supporting characters for my life <laughs> love you maddie um <laughs> no it's just uh there is a you do get a satisfaction when he's electrocuted to death though you know so it does it's the fun, job it does nice death. um i don't know if that's uh scientifically accurate though so i can't support that in this movie about talking to <laughs> what about anything that's shot that has propane in it and explodes you don't oh yeah that no i that actually bugs me in movies and what the about the, movie, they use the a grenade, third one the they, third they use one, a grenade which makes sense the third one has an entire fucking gorilla riding on a horse. And not only that, at one point there's a gorilla and a chimp both on the horse riding. I'm like, no oh, fucking no. way. No, it depends on the horse and the breed of the horse. You, you have, have to think, think so? about it. Yes. Cause okay. So let's say a guy, a man, adult man weighs about 200 pounds. A gorilla can weigh three to 400 pounds. So if you're thinking about a man plus saddlebags, Hell, maybe a man in armor and the horse. Gorillas can armor. weigh up to six hundred pounds. At the lowest, they're like three fifty. Uh, oh, that's not what I googled the other day. Okay, yeah. so still like four, four or five hundred. I don't know. An um, adult male can weigh from three fifty to six hundred. What about that's a, a chimp? One. I don't look up chimps. Chimps. <laughs> chimp. Chimps are a uh, lighter. They're like one hundred fifty pounds. They're yeah, about like, yeah, pounds. about one thirty. So that's like probably end. like 500 pounds on this horse. Dude. It's yeah. At the, at the very minimum, it's like 500 pounds <laughs> Yeah, dude. at the very max. It's like 700. And I feel bad for that horse, <laughs> like, uh, but um, yeah, so that was just a funny thought. Like, I wonder how much that fucking fat ass Maurice weighs. <laughs> Yo, what, what's the deal with why do, why do some orangutan? Is it just, I the, couldn't figure that out. I want to know the cheeks. Like, is it just the men or the alpha males have the cheeks and then the women Let's don't? Let's get Jane, uh, Jane Goodall on this cast. Dude. We do. 
she was i mean she consulted on these movies i'm pretty sure she talked about it on the mark maron's podcast oh really? yeah that's cool which might yeah and mark maron you know um guy we inspired him to make a podcast um but <laughs> Jane and imagine if planet of the apes happened when gigantopithecus happened we'd have our fucking jungle books here. when are we gonna get the movie where horses get sick of being rode on and they revolt and like and they start or, riding on humans yeah they make their own society and shit. yeah dude you get a horse like stepping on peter dinklage like yeah yeah let's go yeah, like jesus that. that's like a family guy visual yeah, image. i know <laughs> the, the, oh. the um i'm trying to get them to hire me so i can make millennial jokes on tv i think what rise does best is it the 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 slow build up to the payoff of when all the apes escape and, and go ape shit, if you will, it does feel like a good payoff. It's been earned. You don't have to wait around forever because it does feel like it naturally progresses as well. I think that's the strongest part of the movie is that aspect. Um, so I do like seeing them go around and attack and do their whole thing. Uh, but I will say, I like that they found something, you know, there's kind of, um, this could be, you know, in the same vein as a monster movie. And, and usually they have the human elements and they don't really know what to do with them. And they have to convolute and contrive their way into getting the third act to work with the humans. I feel like, especially in Godzilla movies, but uh, there is a sweet send off with James Franco, like letting Caesar go and seeing him like, because um, I, I James Franco could have maybe stopped all of this. Who knows? But I guess the simian flu would have still spread. I don't really know. Yeah, it would be you wouldn't be fucking put into slave camps by some fucking chip. Well, the simian <laughs> flu it, it arises when they treat the. I mean, who cares? But when they treat the apes, and then the apes get smart, but then they some sort of flu spreads out. I, I don't know. This movie's these movies are interesting to watch after a pandemic because yeah, uh, it's like any pandemic movie and how the virus makes people dumber. Uh, that made me think of uh, some people say long COVID. I say it makes me think of how the virus exposed how dumb people are thinking five G yeah. towers are giving people illnesses. Yeah, um, so, yeah. they're not, dude. <laughs> that was the, that was at the beginning of the second one. It was like extra weird now. Uh, with all the pandemic shit and guess what people were wearing masks and guess what i guess that didn't help in that movie <laughs> what no. does that tell you <laughs> what's no, your vaccine kidding. gonna do now guys uh -oh. that's, that's a hyper lethal i mean sci-fi level of lethal. yeah i know I'm more lethal playing. than any virus we've ever whatever encountered. liberal <laughs> uh it's one in 500 they say survive it um ouch yeah it's pretty bad yeah um uh, yeah. covid it's like one in 500 die <laughs> jesus yeah no it was like i'm trying to think of other pandemic kind of movies after the fact but uh definitely like that they uh kind of thrust you in there and at the end of the first one i remember being yeah like, oh, there's gonna be a second one that's what it is you know and it's maybe it's that's a smart because it's not so much of a uh cliffhanger um don might no. have a bit more of one because it's just like oh would well, this could just be like a post credits this is what happens next or it could set up into a new one right um, yeah see, if i was james franco at the end i would have been like fuck it i'm gonna be a monkey man and with you guys go full tarzan hopefully i survive this well he didn't know there was a flu yet huh? but just like <laughs> fuck it return to monkey you know what i mean he's, but, uh... he, he's gotta <laughs> um <laughs> We got a big monkey year in theaters, man. We got we got Kong and apes within spitting distance of each oh, other. Yeah, yeah. wow. We are guess ape. what? Guess what? Just like these apes rode horses, and they're going to be riding horses in this next one. We've got Kong riding Godzilla, <laughs> yeah. apparently. Yeah. Yeah, it's stupid. But um, it's that's what sick. I like. That's so sick. Don't even act like it's not. Oh, I'm not. Trust me. But it, yeah, it's really cool that these movies were successful as they were uh, and enough to get a, a, a new one coming out in two months How yeah cool. directed by what's his name who's making the zelda movie so this movie better be good if yeah, i'm to have any uh, hope it's a beautiful day yeah that's all i've been thinking of 
even yeah. though I rewatched the Mario movie the other day and it's not good. It's the safest movie ever. Um, it's not for you, Scott. I know it's not. I, I enjoyed it when I saw it with my five year old niece in theaters, <laughs> which is what it's for. I get it. Yeah, for better or for worse. Kids I'm, deserve good, con- uh, you know, good uh, content. It's not bad for know. a children's movie. It's, it's okay. It's, it's better than the fucking minions. It is yeah, I better than I, I can't say I've never seen the them. simian flu is better than the minions. <laughs> so what we go? It's ten years later. Yeah, we finally yeah. talk about Dawn. Yeah, for sure. Okay, good. I think I'm it was yeah. cool. I was wondering why Dawn. The other two are shot in two thirty nine, and this one's shot in one eighty five, standard widescreen. And I was wondering why that was such a choice. And then the more I watched it, the more I realized it shot parts of it feel like it was shot like like a planet earth or like nature documentary style and the way it has this open mat kind of feels like maybe that's kind of what they were going for like almost like uh we're following these apes around like a discovery channel or something you know no, there is especially in the first act yeah when when it's really showing the ape society and how they've been living and hunting like prehistoric humans hunting using the same tactics and everything um, I guess can they not eat pine needles? I don't know. Um, <laughs> is. And I immediately mean, it's like, for the most part, the exposition in this film feels more natural, more casual. There's still some clunky stuff, like when they're in the car and they're like, "Well, don't you remember this flu is this, this, and this?" And it's like, okay, but other you don't than that, know. she would know. She worked for the CDC. This yeah, stuff like I, that. exactly that. Like, there's some moments where it's clunky, but for the most part, it's a little bit cleaner. I'd say. And overall, it's just a step up in quality, like way more to me, like by two points at least. Um, I feel like Matt Reeves is more of an auteur with uh, his vision and execution. And uh, the sets feel tactile and real. Oh, they're, they're fucking beautiful too. Like this they, has, out of all of them, this has the most beautiful set pieces, just like within the uh, the mountains and uh you know near san francisco or wherever they are Um, i feel like these movies are a good example of people who say cgi is bad um yeah yeah how how that's stupid how that's i mean not it's just simplistic because you said like the the set designs i think um i'm sure there was some green screen usage in these movies absolutely it, it seems like there was a good mix of being on location and then using cg and you know set design to make it seem post-apocalyptic um and then also you couldn't really make these movies the way they are with people in monkey suits i like people in monkey suits uh sometimes i wish there were more people know. in suits and movies i'm kind of uh, hoping they get closer to uh the, the how the apes are i think we're versions. getting there dude i really think we're getting there because yeah. if we do like more like the 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 suits were fine in the tim burton one that's the best part of the movie so like well, I hope they evolve a little bit more. I know the new one's only going to be 200 years later, but I'm hoping like we get like a glimpse of like that kind of apeage. Man, apeage. there's like there's got to there's got to be like an awakening for fucking Hollywood right now. Seeing though Godzilla with a fucking what 15 million dollar budget won an Oscar for special effects, and these 200 million dollar fucking films don't need to be made like that anymore. Um, now, to be fair. I know Dawn didn't cost that much. War of the Planet Apes cost like probably like one fifty, I think, and they yeah. used it well because that's the, some of the best well, CGI of all time. This one was one seventy. War, let's see, was one fifty two, which has been like the best special effects. Like I've seriously, seen. like it's like a top five best CGI I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, me too. And and then also, I was thinking, is it? easier or harder to make apes look realistic because i know the mo capping you can have people play an ape and it <laughs> makes sense because they were both primates but at the same time does that run the risk of because they are more human-like getting an uncanny valley effect yeah i um, think that they somehow escape that shit i don't know or is it just different enough where the uncanny valley is not as much of a problem <laughs> it is it wasn't a problem to me at all i no, me neither I, I, and I remember because this, you know, Avatar, the first Avatar was still hot, you know, and still the peak of special effects arguably was until the next Avatar came out. But um, way to digital 
who did the effects for Avatar. I remember in the when I was reading about this on IGN and stuff back when I still read IGN, when anybody still read IGN. Um, it, it was talking about like the weight of special effects and how realistic Caesar's going to look and stuff. And the teaser was just caesar looking at the camera basically. i remember that teaser like, yeah like, oh dude, man that look, shit ruled too. look how cool these special effects are no and they yeah, are they still yeah, hold they on. Aren't. And, yeah and it's like it looks good in the first one but like the ramp up to two and three is insane Fucking, it's in- it, yeah it's nuts there's certain scenes where it's like uh, you could have convinced me that they used an actual ape to film some of the scenes you know? right and we'll see how it is with the new one um it might be weirder looking when you have more apes speaking in complete sentences or yeah. but also I can buy it because this is my frick is, is this the 10th Planet of the Apes movie? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you count the stupid Tim Burton one, yeah. Which I do. It's the 10th goddamn Planet of the Apes movie. I'm it's not say. stupid. So, um, it's pretty stupid. Uh, <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and, he, and he stole the uh, ending from Kevin Smith, right? Yeah. I stole it from a Jay and Silent Bob comic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. Go look it up, people. It's like too close, too similar. <laughs> but uh yeah, that's a, yeah. So I like that we get this nice setup with Caesar talking to his right hand man Maurice. And right, obviously Maurice is like goaded in these two movies. He's the the most level headed and peaceful. Uh, ape in the whole franchise. He's the shit. He's, He's the, the bro. Awesome. The best. He's the wise bro. And uh, so we get that nice setup, and we get some like world building from them. And I feel like that was enough for people to kind of catch up. We didn't need the whole bit in the car about the CDC and all this stuff. But uh, you know, they could have. No, people, you could. People you can could, figure shit out. Yeah. No, I agree. And you honestly, all three of these movies. Dawn and War, you could probably just watch on their own, and you would understand what's happening. You would get it. You would, um, but I think the impact's so much greater if you. It is. It is so much greater. But I'm saying they're well contained enough. Yeah. Uh, and there's more of a through line in these definitely than there are in the original movies. Because in the original movie, I feel like each movie they made not knowing if there was going to be another one. That's yeah. how it feels. You know, that's it's part of the fun too. It's like yeah, it's part of the fun because they're all so different, all different. Yeah, all three right. of these work together as a unit, especially Dawn and War because they have the same director, um, yeah. which I appreciate that, and I also appreciate just the smorgasbord of tones and styles you get in the original movies. And this is one of the great examples of though, like a different director coming in to do a sequel and it, and it being a better than the original. And uh, Urban Kirshner. Well, you know, um, and so, yeah, Matt Reeves definitely has a brighter, better vision to how to continue the story and, and build off of the first one. Um, I'm not saying it's perfect, but I think, Dawn, this one is actually my favorite of the three. I think yeah. it's badass. I think yeah. uh, the third one's mine. That's I fine. Think, I think War is mine. Um, Dawn no, War is mine. Rise has to be yours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> we can't like the same movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, there were some of the same writers on. Yes, the it's same writers, um, but different director. But that's uh, it's it's cool though. Uh, it works totally. Um, I just think I I like the inner conflict between the apes. We get this natural progression. It's like been years since humans have gone away, kind of. So now we naturally get to see how apes would progress on their own, and uh, of course they can't be. There's going to be some infighting and coming to these struggles. It's fascinating to watch. It's like, like I said, it's like in a more advanced like nature documentary or something for some of it, you know. It is, but well, I, there's, think, I think uh, it's because they talk to primatologists. Yeah, well, yeah. It's like this is not something that that's outside of the realm. There are documentaries concerning like warring. I mean, warring for years, like rival chimpanzee tribes because chimpanzees are motherfuckers. Like it all goes back to these chimpanzees are violent and they like power and they're bad. Every single chimpanzee is bad and you can't convince me otherwise. Which is why they're such a good metaphor for humans and the ills that we do to each other. And yeah, that's species. exactly what are you talking about, dude? Not me. I like the setup between Koba and Caesar at first. It's nice. And then especially on rewatch, you get to see uh kind of I don't know, the foreshadowing and stuff. Uh yeah, this one just uh I like the 
arc of it where where it leads to and uh the climax set piece i like a lot it's just kind of fresh in a way it's not overblown it's not too much it's a very small scale story in uh for such a huge concept you know right and, no uh, all all of these do well in keeping the conflicts and the battles small even yeah. war i mean you you really at that battle at the end you have what some blackhawks and then like 20 dudes on a wall defending it and that's yeah. it which that's if it. we're if we're in the post apocalypse that's realistic yeah which I, I appreciate the scale of that. Also, you know, when you get a, a, a huge scale in a battle scene, it's it's just too much to direct yeah. and focus on for the audience, you know. Um, and we've talked about that a lot, how battle scenes need to have beats the same way, and emotional beats the same way anything else does. Yeah. Um, and and th- both of these movies, Dawn and War, they're definitely okay with taking their time for emotional beats, especially War, because War is a bit longer. War is 220. Um, and it is brave enough to, I know we're, I'm skipping way ahead here, That's fine. but to in the battle scene stop for, it seems like five minutes. I mean, it's a good while. It's a long scene to show that the Colonel and by far the most menacing role I've seen pothead Woody Harrelson in <laughs> yeah. of all the, <laughs> like who in real life seems like the most hippie, dippy, calm, relaxed guy, but he plays not enough happy sex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like the monkey took my hacky sack they must die <laughs> well there's also natural born killers but yeah I guess. oh yeah, yeah yeah you're right you're right but um yes. um but but the, the whole scene with him and caesar toward the end where you learn that he's sick that he's got it um the mechanisms of the speech loss aren't or is it airborne is it if you talk to the monkey uh i don't know how it works or is he it got just it kinda... from the doll did you get it from the doll yeah oh he did get it from the doll you're right he got it from the human oh i didn't put that together i'm dumb (laughs) no i just yeah i didn't think i i was kind of i kind of was hand waving the the details of how the virus spreads you know so i wasn't too focused on that no me neither i don't don't need i don't need fauci to come on screen (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, so like, there's plenty of stuff that you know I don't mind suspending my disbelief with. I really love Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I do have a couple of uh, things I do not care for that much. Not care for, but just like a couple of things I have issue with. I feel like the score in the second one is weak in areas. They have this weird like kooky xylophone they do at points. I don't like that at okay. all. Okay. I like it because it's an effective callback to the originals that doesn't pay attention, doesn't insist upon itself. I get that, but like, I feel like it doesn't make it as serious as it could have when the apes are like coming up to like spy on the humans and stuff. But the, it, it that's like in the first like third, it, it gets better because I like when like Jason Clark walks up to their camp, there's this eerie organ music and stuff. That sounds really great and matches the tone, but uh, I I respect the idea of like the xylophone shit. It just didn't work for me completely. Yeah, but it's some sneaking. It's a ding 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 ding. I know it's sneaking. just it's I don't sneaky know. music. You gotta have sneaky music. That's fine. He's got to nitpick everything to death, guys. I'm not nitpicking. I love this movie. I think Koba is like one of the more menacing villains we've had in a long time, especially because he's like not even close to being as honorable as Caesar is with this shit. Like, very willing to, like, act like he's being subservient and then fucking him up, you know? But also there's, like, the idea, it's like, yeah, these humans were fucked, so how you kind of feel for Koba's ideas a little bit, but he just doesn't, he's too angry, does not execute him, he's not loyal to his own kind. So there's some complexity there for a villain, and that's great. Have yeah, a fucking he, the villain, you know. No, he's he's sympathetic. Um, that's an old screenwriting rule of everybody needs to be right in an argument. On I will say, I think that the again, the human stuff's lacking pretty heavy on this one. I didn't care in Dawn. Or, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really care the, about. And that Jason. sucks because it's Gary Oldman. Well, no, he's okay. I don't um, like it. He doesn't Jason have a lot Clark's- to do. Jake, Jason Clark's makeshift family is fine. It does the job. Other than his family and the uh, and Gary Oldman, every other character feels like kind of your generic post-apocalyptic NPC in like a video game. Right. There's the one guy who's like 
I should blame the monkeys. And he's like, yeah. He's like, well, who else do you want me to blame? By, uh, it, was the, it was the disease. You don't know that. She worked for the CDC. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that, that's that exposition just gets stuck in my head. That's annoying. Yeah. But, but yeah, uh, I'm just not a super big on the human aspects of this, but everything concerning the infighting is fucking awesome. And it's even awesome. Jason, Jason Clark doesn't have, uh, as Malcolm, he doesn't have the hugest arc. He's no. just he's just sort of I'm the good guy, and I think we should treat yeah. the apes as friends because I'm Jason Clark guy. could be Woody Harrelson's like younger brother. They look yeah. so similar. They do me. look kind of similar. And but- I I I actually think Dawn um it is a bit I mean you do have monkeys shooting guns, but it is a bit by the numbers Hollywood in the way that it ends in a big battle. And I guess war does too, but it feels different. I don't know what it is um, because the battle I, I, is almost I, I, a, a background to the well, the in war, it's like an execution, essentially, like there's the monkeys are, are the oh, sorry, apes yeah. uh, aren't uh, aren't doing as much fighting his back as they are trying to get the fuck out of there. Um, and it's the, the humans fighting humans again, which is inevitably what's going to happen. I do like the humans fighting humans, but for me, the conflict of the second one being ape versus ape of their own tribe that's very riveting to me oh well, yeah and it sets up for him to right. still deal with like ptsd from that like he's yeah god damn the scenes in war where he's like cruci- being crucified and he's like hallucinating koba haunting him yeah we get ape jesus in that movie yeah dude it's so sick I mean, well caesar you know he has to be crucified um he just has to be uh as yeah. soon as i saw that they brought the crucifixes back in that movie i thought okay so caesar's gonna end up on one of those <laughs> now it but is. it's just the dawn succeeds so well at making you care so much about this tribe of apes and the way they uh grow and don't grow as a tribe and mm-hmm. at caesar himself uh his when he attacks Koba out of anger, it's a very sad moment for his character. He lost control. And yeah, no Don parallels is... to the original where Caesar struggles with this in the, in the, in the original series. I don't know. It's uh it's good. Right. He has to remind himself ape, not kill ape. But then, yeah. he, then at the end, he's like, you're not even an ape, which is yeah. sort of, I do. Here's that guilty pleasure trope of mine is the Batman begins. I won't kill you but I don't have to save you that sort of thing. Although in this case, he kills him more because he kind of just drops him into a hole. I don't Uh, know. I do like uh, the importance of there's like everything that happens in this movie has heavy weight. Like it's not just like kind of glanced over in the next film besides, you know, the family that he befriends, like, I don't really learn, learn a whole lot about that. They just, but yeah, he tells them to, at the end to just yeah, get, to get out the of fuck Dodge, out of here. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, at the same time, but like everything that happens concerning Koba, there's so much fucking weight to it, uh, because like that's just the one. I feel like that's the one mistake that Caesar feels like caused everything. Um, you know, the the ending of this movie where he lets Koba off until the beginning when his son comes back after they they defeat that like whole thing yeah. and then his son inevitably being shot in place of him uh he i think he sees it as koba and then that's when he's like you know what fuck it i am like koba let's go fuck these people up yeah it is, is um a lot of nuance complexity to his character and the the fact that he does kill koba and then he has to live with that for the rest of his life it's pretty cool uh and a good choice, I think, for him to actually let him go at the end to drop ape. him. No fuck ape. I mean, kill <laughs> ape. But um, we we do get some quote unquote humanizing moments, like when Maurice has the interaction with the Kmart great value Jay Burrishell kid, um, teaching him to read and stuff, and. Uh, and then it's like this nice moment between them, and then it immediately cuts to humans firing guns at the practice range. Simple cuts like that that are effective, I feel like, in this movie. And uh, I love – you see how – I like that you see how conniving Koba is because how easily he slips into acting like a silly monkey and, like, jumping around <laughs> like, oh. I, I think he knew – like, he, he learned that from being experimented on. Like, yeah. if he wanted something, he had to act cute and cuddly. Yeah. Definitely, it's good character like, development. I will so say, funny how I have, I have, I have a um, 
complain. I normally don't complain about plot holes, okay. but it does feel like they left something out where the so he kills those two men who are trying out all the armory weapons yeah um, by shooting them at those humvee um and then later that night or even the next night the apes invade that stronghold um d- did nobody find those bodies they do yeah, the fucking not, monkeys yeah. they ate them there's that problem and there's also like why did none of the apes think to check and f- try and find caesar's body to confirm he was dead you know yeah as soon as i it's and this is just from watching movies. As soon as you see him fall off the cliff, you think, oh, well, he's still alive, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but, but also they're apes. Maybe they didn't think. This is their first war. They've never had a war. Before. That's true. Yeah. They've never watched movies like we have. You know? No, they don't watch movies. <laughs> they're not Kino. <laughs> yeah. It's a, These it's Kongs ain't Kino. <laughs> yeah, know. there you go. There's a concept. Kino Kong. Kino Kong. It's gonna he be reviews Quentin all the ape movies. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, no, the the strongest part of the film for me is when he's recovering and he goes takes him back to his old house, and his son comes in and is pissed, but he has Caesar has to tell him like ape did this, like that's really tragic, and like a conversation with his son, like basically seeing him accept the fact that apes and humans are similar you can't deny that anymore and that ape not apes can't just be trusted because they're ape is like the sad but very powerful disillusionment and that's really to me like the strongest point of the film right it's it's like it's like when my dad had to explain to me not all white people were good despite what he told me all my life (laughs) okay (laughs) he was like no i was wrong white people can be bad (laughs) And I was like, Columbus was bad? And he was like, yeah, believe it or not. This was a month ago, by the way. Yeah, this was last month. I was 30 <laughs> years old when I learned this. <laughs> Fucking dumb. My and own the, people. The one did you connection. Know that? Did you know that white people did bad things? I'm sorry. I'm done with this bit. Um, <laughs> the one good, the, the way to connect it uh, is the fact that he is in his old house and he finds the camcorder and stuff and Jason Clark sees it, and um, I feel like that makes it truly essential for his growth Uh, because he almost died, and it's in his house, and I don't know. It just – the whole time I was thinking, I'm like, yeah, it's a great way to connect it without going too far, without trying to call back way too much, you know? Right. We don't need a whole flashback scene with Franco and like like a dream sequence with Frank. What (laughs) what What if there was a sex tape on that camcorder? What if you turn it on and he Oops. was like, he was banging that chick and she has like a monkey mask on because he's into that or something? No, let me fast forward real quick. <laughs> he's like, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oops. Whoops. Whoops. God, how long is it? This is three. There's three hours of sex tape on here. Oh, <laughs> no, it does make. I, at first, I'm like, well, how does this camcorder still have battery? But then it dies after like 30 seconds. I'm like, okay, no, that that's that makes sense. Yeah, we you know these movies need to be scientifically accurate. I agree. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like I wrote. I've written a post-apocalyptic film. That's and so I have to think all, all in detail about these kinds of things. Um, so that's why I get so heavy into uh, suspending my disbelief for certain things, post-apocalyptic wise. Certain things like. Uh, gas town and like yeah. mad max doesn't bother me no that doesn't bother me um gas working in move they have gas generators and in, in reality gas will expire after yeah it, it dissipate around. yeah that's that's in but, ev- in every post-apocalyptic thing i just have to hand like wave that out of yeah it bugs the shit out of me it it, it really bugs me but um yeah. And I guess they can just figure out how to make this dam work. Although the idea of making a dam dams would like if all of humanity just disappeared, the Hoover Dam would still be generating electricity for a while um, until just stuff wore down or I don't, I don't know. I've read about it. Barnacles get in there. Yeah. Yeah. Rise of the plane of the barnacles, whatever. <laughs> Bro, be a gross fucking movie. <laughs> now, I do like that the climax like despite the human elements being kind of eh or whatever, the, the the set piece at the end where the, the humans are below and then the apes are fighting up top, I think it does like the human tension well enough and uh, Gary Oldman blows the 
tower up. It, it's not like a save the day kind of thing. I think it's actually more interesting that they don't stop him from blowing up. up. It's just like, uh, fuck it, I'm saving humanity, bitch. But are you? I don't know. Yeah. Well, it, to be fair, what? How would you deal in this situation? Right. You knew apes were trying to kill you, and they had guns. But then, exactly, part yeah. of you feels guilty because they're sapient. They can talk, but only kind of. There's a debate of whether Coco the gorilla could really talk. Uh, I don't want to go. Uh, no. <laughs> this oh, is a we, hot topic. oh, I remember I, I brought this up last time, and you didn't like this. No. This is a hot topic for Kasher, yeah. That we were, um, that she was just imitating. No, they don't even need to. No, 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 no. It's like those stupid, like, videos. I'll stop talking bad about Kasher's sister. Oh, oh. (laughs) Yeah, well, me and Adrian know how your sister's like. Oh, Yeah. yeah. There's, um, yeah, great. There's these, like, videos I see on TikTok where, like, they have, like, a dog press on buttons to express itself and stuff and so many people just like believe it and i'm like dude this dog doesn't know what it's saying and it bugs the shit out of me but um, well it, it gets into a sort of philosophical concept of when are you using language and comprehending grammatical structures and when are you simply making an association of oh if i press this button the owner lets me out right if i press yeah. this button they give me food yeah you know, it's but that's you're not actually c- comprehending like these are things that can make sentences in grammar. That's like, yeah, that's like one button will say, oh, I'm feeling sad. And it's like, why are you feeling sad? And then the owner gets like upset. Like, oh, you're sad. And it's like, dude. Okay. Imagine the kind of person who sets that all up for their dog and films it and becomes a content. I'm just waiting for Parker to do it. Would you <laughs> Would you want to hang out with that person? Uh, well, Adrian oh. would want to get engaged with that. Yeah, person. Adrian will get married to that. Oh, that's a that's a line. No way. That's psycho stuff. That is annoying shit. That is annoying. <laughs> but they'd probably try whatever you want in bed. But or just be a complete pillow princess. One or the other. I can't tell. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So anyway, <laughs> he doesn't let yeah Koba off the hook because that would have just led to more trouble i feel like and we do get a sense of that because in the third one it's kind of sad you realize at the beginning that koba's followers have defected so much that that now they're following humans it's like how do you let yourself go so low ridiculous and they're called donkeys like donkey Kong. yeah is that the intent or is it just because they carry stuff yeah probably because they're mules yeah yeah they're mules you know that's what we this what about Diddy Kong, Casher? Do you like Diddy Kong? He's a chimp. No. And it's like okay. Miyamoto. He's not, he's like not a chimp. chimp. He has a long tail, doesn't he? Chimps yeah. Don't have, chimps don't have tails. That's a fucking spider monkey, bud. Uh, yeah, I guess. But I think he's a chimp. And uh, I don't know. We're, we only have enough time for one monkey lore today. And uh... <laughs> well, the question is, is in the first movie, it's like only the apes in the in the laboratory are the smart apes and they rescue the apes from the zoo and it's like how are they getting the apes from the zoo to do all this shit and do they just like i don't know so i think what happens is so the simian flu started in the lab basically once they treated those monkeys with whatever it caused some sort of pathogen this is all very hand wavy uh to become the simian flu but I think when that simian flu gets retransmitted to apes, those apes become hyper intelligent. Like you have yeah. the the little uh, one, what's his name, who goes bad ape. Yeah, his name's Bad Ape. Yeah. Um, who in the new one? He's from the zoo, but he became hyper intelligent. <laughs> it's it's funny that he escaped that zoo too because they use that zoo by name, and so I'm wondering if they got any bad press. <laughs> Or just being like associated with a I character. I, I bet I don't know what legally if you have to get permission to use a zoo or if it's a public enough institution. Um, but ah, probably not. Most people weren't paying that much attention. Also, you're saying, you know, we treated the monkeys here. We treat them so well they learn English. You know, that's what's better than that. <laughs> no, they they what happened is that that's what they all killed his family. Yeah, well, that's because every the world was going insane because he's a bad ape. He's a bad idiot. <laughs> yeah. 
No, yeah, but um, that is a like sad reveal. The apes have like stooped so low to serve humans now, just because they don't want to put up with uh, Caesar. I guess I don't know. Man, yeah, the 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 fall of red, that fucking donkey. Um, it feels gross calling him that. Um, I don't know why. It is but, gross. Uh, no, it's like you get to see that progressively throughout the whole thing. Uh, seeing red get more and more like given shit by Caesar and the other apes for what he's doing uh, and still somehow mindlessly doing stuff until, you know, the very end when he's like, yeah, fuck this. He's, yeah. a, he's a race trader. There's no way around it. Yeah. I and think uh, the best way to describe it, honestly. I think the most, the biggest success of the film is that it's able to give me a lump in my throat over a CGI ape's deaths because when that sequence, when he stumbles upon his wife and child dead, murdered by the Colonel, it's such a really well staged shot with the slow-mo of the realization to him dodging the bullets while having to process all of this at the same time. It's a really good sequence. And I, yeah, it's so cool that it makes me care so much about, uh, you know, uh, uh, an animated monkey <laughs> face. But yeah, dude, you get you get to that point where you're like, please, please make sure they didn't kill the baby. Well, even uh, even the first movie, I think it's amazing how they get me to root against my own species. Yeah, because it's so centered from Caesar's point of view that in during the rise, I'm like, yeah, fuck him up, dude. Fuck it. Yeah, like, hell yeah, yeah, dude. Burn those pigs. Kill them. <laughs> yeah, when they're in the the shooting from the helicopter and the the uh ape jumps onto the helicopter and breaks it the fuck down and then caesar walks up to the guy and just like casually kind of gives him this cold ass look and then shoves it off and that was koba who did that actually okay well the the way which is important caesar walks away is cold as fuck yeah koba like shoves comes comes with this big old grin just like pushes it off so funny to me though fucking sick uh yeah no it's it's kind of fucked too because you've got fucking the, the white ape, whatever his fucking name was, uh, Winter, being the the whole sole reason why that situation even happened. They got into that big battle, and he was pissed that they let people go. It's another Koba situation. Apes can't fucking get over their goddamn anger problems. Yeah, um, I like that this one's like a cross country trek. You know, it changes it up. It's set during the winter. It's just this great backdrop, brutal backdrop, because his family's dead. He has pretty, you know, he still has a son, but like he's has nothing to lose. We're watching him get swallowed up by rage. And that's the whole thing is like you're following him and wishing that he could see the bigger picture, but we have to follow his journey, his descent. Um, you know, it's a uh, more nuanced than that, but that's, I like that. It's all three of these are different in that way. I'm like, okay, this is like a trek across to find the killer of his family. And then the second one is like defending their first interaction, like a uh, battle with humans. And then the first one's the uprising. It's all like there. It's much more, connected than the original five films but like it's they're all still very different absolutely yeah. and there's think... a good there's a good sense of scale in the sense of the journey in the third one yeah. but at the same time all of these movies i appreciate that they keep their scale in check yeah um yeah, because you're really you're mostly in the bay area and maybe a bit more north up the west coast yeah do um, you uh do you guys think caesar is a christ figure in the <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's absolutely a Christ. Yeah, literally, he's literally. a Messiah. He finds a homeland for the not the Jews, but for the apes. Yeah, that's the cl- end of this trilogy. Is he finds Zion? He finds Canaan. You know, he's an Abrahamic figure, Messianic figure, whatever you want to do it. Yeah, exactly. Now I do like. Um, I like the setup of the girl she doesn't serve too much of a purpose but the fact that she's deaf and maurice wants to take care of her it's it's you know it's nice and it's also set up for like why she why can't she or she's mute rather and it's like why can't she talk and i I think it'll be a good setup for the next film with concerning the way that they 
there's one group of, of like apes hunting and enslaving and there's another group that still kind of follows the hey if we can live in harmony we can live in harmony yeah which is also you know a direct line to the original film where none of the humans can talk except for taylor so i i get what they're having to set or they didn't have to set it up but they just wanted to and that's totally fine um but uh i think the score in this one is the best out of the three it was definitely a step up from the second one in my opinion i know we have you know different yeah you have a little bit of of the xylophony stuff but it's probably used a bit better i understand why you wouldn't like it i'm thinking of casting that little girl and how interesting the casting call would have been because it says it says we need a cute little girl who also needs to be able to look stupid when we need her to (laughs) and what an easy like Roll. You don't have to say any lines. You just have to react with your face. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying like it's not. It's a nice gig. Well, well it, it, it cuts that. down. It cuts down on some of the child actor bull crap you see when you see child actors try to child act if their name isn't Haley Joel Osment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you don't want all the like the little kid quips and like talking silly jokes and stuff. Some Hannah Montana annoying. shit. And, uh, I also think it's important to have her there to make sure that Caesar's not. Fully gone into like the whole kill yeah. all human. That's a thing. good point. Yeah. The rage. Well, I they think that's have why... children too. I have children. Oh well, yeah, I think Maurice specifically, you know, had that in mind when he's like, "I'm not leaving her." Like, this is a child. We killed their fucking father, which like, she seems to be okay with. Or... She's just like, "Oh, sick." Cool. Yeah. No, it's well, just kind of. I it, well, I don't know the situations. I think likely that it was just someone who was taking care of her and she or she was feral way. and doesn't give a fuck. She's like, Oh, you killed my father, now you're my new father. I, I, I'm closer to Casher on this. I think she's not very intelligent outside of being able to speak not being able to speak and just kind of goes along with wherever the wind takes yeah. her. Well, I guess so, yeah, because she's like she's younger than ten and it's been fifteen years since the shit happened so yeah i guess she was a uh, post-apocalyptic baby like that little shit in road warrior that throws the boomerang <laughs> yeah but that person's way cooler <laughs> the fear yeah, of but um uh, yeah i like that uh i like the idea of the ape internment to camp or whatever i do think the mm-hmm. second half of the movie does drag a little bit up until the jailbreak i feel like they could have it's like 30 minutes that could have been condensed into 20 or 15 minutes, I feel like. Uh, and like the exposition dump that the colonel gives goes on way too long, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah. I enjoy that scene. It is long. It does take us time, but it's the only time we get to see the colonel outside of him either leading soldiers. And I'm thinking these soldiers, they're not soldiers. If you know what I mean, yeah, they're, they're white supremacists. Basically, they're um, yeah. Do you think this was a metaphor for the Trump administration keeping children in cages? Uh, <laughs> in 2017. <laughs> in 2017, was he doing that yet, or did Obama already do that? Because um, <laughs> multiple presidents can do bad things. Uh, this is not a defense of you know Trump, by the way. But Trump 2024, Trump, 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 Trump. Get yeah, let's. <laughs> Uh, Matt Reeves, 2024. That's I do I'm think president. that that um, scene is important to make, uh, not only make give you a little bit of sympathy for uh, the colonel, but also make him even sound like more of a bastard. I know, well, I, I understand that. I feel like there could have been like a little bit more of a setup with him maybe earlier on, so we didn't have to have as much of it all concentrated in one scene, and then it's like. This uh, the main part that's dragged out is Caesar being like abused and like put on the cross and like put in jail and then the little girl sneaks him some water and all this just it, I feel like it's just it could have been true. Did did nobody see the little girl? They have all no. the spotlights and stuff. She just walked in there. Yeah, yeah. she was no, she was just they the uh, what's his face rocket distracted them while she was running to go get the water to the to she, um, he distracted her so she could get out. No, bro. Yes. Nope, bro. Like she just walks in there and then uh gives him the water and then well, they go rocket. they go underground to get in there, don't they? No, she walks in. 
No, she fought. I don't remember it being like that. I don't know why. She does. It's okay. It. It's okay. You can hand wave it. I'm just saying. It just, I once it gets to like, okay, we're going to break out of here. That's when it picks back up for me. And, you know, that's just my. Call. I don't know. I love the scene whenever he's, I like all the revolutionary scenes. Turn him into the next fucking like revolutionary, like political like fucking Che Guevara or fucking like some badass like revolutionary from, from our time. Who who's Che Guevara? Uh, Caesar? Yeah. Okay. But like <laughs> half him just like well, there's like that whole scene when uh the, the 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 ape, the orangutan is about to be beat or being whipped, and he just like yells at Red and he's like, Don't fucking do that again. And then he takes the beatings for him and stuff like yeah. that. He straight and, up in this one, he's straight up like Pharaoh, let my people But also go. <laughs> we need that to happen because they've lost faith in him. He left to go get revenge, and That's immediately true. they were taken in. So we That's have true. to have this time to set up him coming back as like a messiah complex, where he actually is going. And to him atoning it. for his own mistakes. Did I just get? That's true. I just feel like it could have been trimmed down by ten minutes. Well, then trim it down, Adrian. Go ahead and edit it. it I ruin will. The movie. <laughs> Maybe I will, dude. That's how I felt about fucking King of the Monsters. I kept thinking. How could I turn this into a hundred minute movie? You know, no, no, not no. that now I'm saying this is not nearly in the same severity as King of the Monsters. Like this is a much, much better film than King of the Monsters. I'm just saying, like, I do think of like ways I could trim a lot. And uh no. there's plenty of movies where that are long that don't need trimming at all. And I uh, think I think if you trimmed all the human parts, that would help. If it was just apes. I think that'd help all these movies. No, no, I'm just saying, like, uh, it it did. I'm hoping whatever's after Kingdom, I hope it's only apes. I hope there's no humans. And I hope they use real apes. I hope it's just footage of apes. <laughs> That's the whole movie. <laughs> I hope they just give real apes real machine guns and film them go wild. And that's the next one. That's fucked up. <laughs> just, I will say. It took the apes are doing like ISIS beheading videos. They're like Jesus. capturing journalists and they're like reading demands to the Western media. Like <laughs> they're trying to write Hamlet on a typewriter. Yeah. <laughs> that's, now, the, that's the next one. That's the 12th one. <laughs> it took nine films to get to finally where we get shit slinging. Oh, I no, finally. I was finally. I'm, you mentioned that in the Matt chat. Reeves. I almost spoiled it, but then I was like, "Oh wait, he hasn't seen this yet." No, I hadn't yeah. seen it yet. Matt Reeves is an auteur. <laughs> <laughs> the like, and the only way I could love him more if he put shit slinging in the next Batman movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Guano Man. Yeah, finally. I'm really coming at you with gross, stupid bits today, hard, aren't I? <laughs> no, it's okay. This is you know. Um, no, eight. These eight movies are damn serious. All right. This no, is the most serious like thing we've talked on this, in, in including Zone of Interest. I do like how serious it is, though. I do like that uh, it, it's not... They learned from Battle for the Planet of the Apes. We're not going to do an extended fucking Lord of the Rings kind of fucking fight on horseback and all this. No, and that battle, it's especially in the escape. extended cut, just goes on way too long. Uh, yeah, And is boring. It's not staged well at all. It's just them in a field it's this is so funny game. though because it's just <laughs> constant <laughs> shots of them with machine guns and shit it's because <laughs> so it's funny. they it was so low budget they had to be, i know it's they so tried funny to make it's... the biggest battle scene in the in the series on the probably the series lowest budget <laughs> yeah but you get to see paul williams running in a monkey suit shooting fucking assault rifles that's, that's pretty cool still, that's pretty cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it, it was a smart move though to like the conflict ends up between the humans and then you see the apes get gunned down as they try to escape and then you get the sacrificial moment and uh yeah yeah and the big character arc for the donkey gorilla being like wait maybe i shouldn't gun down my own people for no reason yeah who would have thought <laughs> yeah which is also shot. this is and i understand it's a movie it's ridiculous that like you have Black Hawk shooting missiles at you, and then you're like, "Wait a minute, let me take time to shoot these monkeys that are running away." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, okay, well, priorities here. Well, uh, the colonel has them rightly, I will say, convinced that like the apes will lead to uh, you know a planet of the apes, if you will. So they are pretty ape pilled, anti ape pilled, <laughs> anti ape pilled. Even even title drops. He doesn't even say planet of the apes. 
he's like this planet will be ruled by apes you know I was like hey yeah, if you're yeah. gonna do the title drop do the title drop woody i don't know it, it worked for me no it works for me but, um, uh of wino colonel kurtz so yeah of... rest in peace yeah no if he had got fat like fat brando that would have made this we awesome. did get some fucking like cerebral fucking dream sequences in this that were fucking cool with like, like Koba with Koba. Oh yeah, that's a great way to make his his choice at the end of the second one have so much of an impact on yeah, him. They, everything that he did with like Koba and everything in the first film. And it's true, and it's good impact. that these are even though they're action blockbusters. Um and I wouldn't even say emphasis on action, but all the violence in these movies does it does feel like it has weight. It's not just Luke Skywalker. No, I'm gonna blow up this space station full of people and whatever. You shrug it off. Um, fantasy escapism violence, and, and and even in movies and other media where the the criticism of war movies is that you can't make an anti-war movie because of anything you put on screen, you automatically glorify and make cool. Yeah, um, tell them to watch Come and See. Yeah, except maybe that one. Um, but if you, if you think of something like I don't know any of your World War II movies, but that that has its own political kind of, I don't want to say jingoistic, but arguably jingoistic can be used to justify jingoism, and because America still thinks we're in World War II for some reason. Jingo fetism. Yeah, yeah. Jingo. I forgot where I was going with this. Um, but it's good. It's good that the uh, I'm trying to sound smarter than I am. It's it's good that the violence in these movies has weights and sometimes for example i always hate it when a, a bad guy or a good guy will kill like 30 henchmen and then at the end he'll get to the the boss and he'll say no i'll let you live we're not the same it doesn't do that uh, <laughs> no it's, in fact it's it, it's great that he finally gets to the colonel and the colonel is like incapacitated pretty much because he's got the sickness and he, it's or not do you think he was just really drunk he was drunk, but like also he was getting sick. He's got the sick. He's got he the sickness. He's got. He's got the sickness. But That's why it we, showed the doll in the room. Yeah, and it's such like a. I don't know. It's, I can't even enjoy my revenge. Yeah, and also seeing how pathetic this guy is, he's clearly. Because I was thinking about it, I. I I know I'm human, and I know how fallible humans all are. Not least of all myself. So the idea of anybody wanting to be a leader of that sort is almost alien to me because I would never want to have a platoon of men. Um, I would never even really want to be the boss in an office. Sorry to say. Um, yeah. Although I think part of that is you just kind of, as you rise through the ranks, you realize how incompetent everybody around you are is. And you're like, well, if that guy can be boss, I can be boss. I really, I think Pete, that's how people become president. They they just end up being senator and they're like, wait, that guy's wanting to run for president. I'm that guy's an idiot. I'm gonna run for president. That guy can run for president. Um <laughs> uh, like I don't, maybe Obama was just like, Oh, John McCain, that old fuck, I'll run for president. He, That's kind of the uh, whole concept of a character in succession. Yeah. She's like, you know, I could I could be president and then goes on to try to become president. I mean, I at this point, I don't see give me five more years, I can be president. Why not? <laughs> Once this podcast really blows up when we get all our listeners to vote for me. <laughs> they'll write you in and like harambe yeah yeah i think harambe would have liked this movie i don't know man I and don't you, know. do you think do you think harambe you know i think harambe was a friend of the humans and he wanted to protect them um and i think it's sad that he got shot but at the same time i think he would have understood you know i don't i think that's bullshit that he got killed yeah but anyway <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he would have. Yeah, it's a very. It's not like movies where the trank they they can't tranquilize him and it knocks him out instantly. That's another movie thing that doesn't. doesn't yeah, work. And they do that in the Rise. It, it's yeah, instant knockout. You know. Yeah, things oh, well. don't enter your bloodstream that quick. If I take a shot, it takes a couple minutes for it to really get going. I think my more issue is like he has this wound. How long was he walking to the promised land? Was he bleeding and shit before he died at the end? Yeah, nobody noticed. And then he's like, all right, we're here. Blech. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's movie magic, whatever. It, logic doesn't matter. I yeah, guess. this movie magic, fake ass chimpanzee talking people. monkeys. But it's like, because they were in the winter <laughs> and they walked to a completely different bio. Well, they were in the, they were in the, yeah, they were in the mountains. 
I, I think they were just sort of in the, I guess there's the Redwood Forest, but you know, they're still in California probably, or what was California. I think they were in the mount, like a mountainous region. Yeah. That's going to make sense if they're going from that straight to desert. It'd be like uh, in like Nevada or something like that. Well, yeah, they are in Nevada. So they're talking about because they go, that's where Bad Ape is from. Okay. Yeah. I Boom. Did, I did. Boom. <laughs> Bad Ape. Yeah. It's, it's, do you think it's weird that in Dawn they're thinking it's too winter since we've seen signs of humans? But then San Francisco is right over there. You can see it from their camp. So you, you didn't check out that San Francisco in the past two years at all? No, that's the same problem in the original series when they go to check out the old uh, city. It's like only like a three day walk for them. Yeah. So, you know, and they hadn't done it in like 10, 15 years in that one either. So it's the same thing. It is. <laughs> it is. But also, you know, I would be, I wouldn't want to go looking around if I didn't need to, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're hanging out in the trees with your monkey friends. Yeah, yeah. I'm chilling for sure. <laughs> All right. Final thoughts on Planet of the Apes trilogy. They're good. Which is your favorite out of all of them? Out of, of out of every Planet of the Apes movie? I didn't no. prepare for that. The original. Jeez. Christ, Adrian. Um still the original for me. Okay, definitely Mark Wahlberg. Okay. Um no, no, the original is still my favorite. Um, I really like Escape still. Um, Me too. Es- Escape might be my second favorite. Um, Me too. I really like, and then it might go original Escape, then War. It might go there. And then the rest are kind of sprinkled around. Battle's probably the worst. Um, I think, what's the one where they go back in time? forward or back in time to the original state of the yeah planet. it's escape that's what i thought that's my favorite one if they could read one of them because that's a that's a goofy sci-fi concept yeah that's Again, my favorite one they make it work hell yeah, yeah they do it's half of it's a fish out of water comedy and the other half is just manhunt yeah it's <laughs> shit. a pun conquest is up there because it's just half of it is just them shooting fucking people with machine guns. And so right. no one nope. likes Beneath the Planet of the Apes. I do like Beneath a lot, but um, I like I like Beneath same. a lot because it goes there. Um, I think it has problems. I think the new uh, the new protagonist is boring. Johnny do good. Um, and really all the stuff up until we get to the Beneath that movie's very backloaded in the cool stuff. Yeah, I think yeah, that's I, I feel all the cool stuff happens in the third act. And the first couple of acts are whatever. We're kind of retreading. We have to we have to have this new astronaut kind of rediscover all the same stuff that Taylor discovered in the first movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. but then by the time we get to mutants worshiping an atom bomb, I go, okay, this is uh, which again, rules. since I rewatched that for the first time in years, since maybe I was a kid, I was like teenager or something. I was like, all right, now that I'm older and appreciate just going full balls to the wall, going for it sort of stories. Uh, now that I've seen Evangelion, basically, um, I can appreciate how stupid and ridiculous and awesome and ballsy that movie is. Yeah, Conquest, I really like. I also think it's kind of uneven and can definitely feel cheap. And also, again, the whole like in eight years, all of these apes have learned how to talk just magically. I, it's it's it is what it is. <laughs> no, they haven't yeah, learned yeah. how to talk. Yeah, I think my favorite's but, Escape. That's cool, man. All yeah. right. You can see apes go shopping. Yeah, that's that's. I really wish that we uh, would have gotten the reboot trilogy where they would have like shown the birth of Caesar that way, <laughs> being left <laughs> on a fucking pier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think that wraps up our conversation on the apes trilogy reboot trilogy. Now this will be our third apes cast. We're gonna have one more apes cast to round the whole thing off, and we'll discuss the new movie when it comes out in a couple Tim of months. Tim Burton's Planet no. of the Apes. <laughs> Look forward to our discussion on Keen of the Planet of the Apes in a couple months. We don't yeah. normally do a lot of new films, but I feel like it's necessary. Yeah, we've done every other goddamn. We've done every other <laughs> fucking ape movie, goddamn. No, we fucking... haven't. Yes, we did. Except we Tim talked Burton's. about Wahlberg's in the Talk last one. It. It's okay. We don't have and to talk about one. that one now. Thanks for listening, everybody. If you want more, we have plenty more. If this is your first Apes cast, we have two other ones. Big balls, awesome stuff. <laughs> but uh, we have 
tons of more episodes on a bunch of different movies, a bunch of Kino, some not Kino. We have a tie-in film called Patricia's Guide to Kino. If you want a tie-in film, I wrote a book called The Kids We Used to Be. If you want to support that, that will just lead to cooler shit for this channel. And Scott does comedy. If you live in Arkansas, check him out. <laughs> At Scott K Comedy. Uh, been having a lot of shows recently. Been doing more shows in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, things going pretty well. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye.